Hello, Taurus sisters, it's me, Amy. Um, I'm making a whole bunch of videos this afternoon. <laughs> Walking inspires me and it's beautiful outside. So let's talk about uh, women's groups, uh, starting women's groups. A little backstory, a couple years ago at the retreat, I told the ladies there, um, well, back backstory. Of all the things you Taurus sisters ask for me, from me is for connection. You want to know, is there anyone in my city? Um, is there a group here? Is there a group there? Amy, can you introduce me to people? Amy, how do I meet people? All of these things. Connections. Real life connections. Although a lot of you love the online connections too, which are also valuable. And so for years, I have thought, I mean, I can make printables and downloads and videos but I would really like to give you the number one thing you ask for, connection. <laughs> so for years I've been thinking, how can I do that? How can I deliver that? And in the end, I don't think I can do that. <laughs> I can't figure it out. Uh, at the Taurus Sisters Retreat a couple years ago, I laid out to the ladies there, they were so sweet, they listened to me for a long time, an idea I had for starting like Taurus Sisters meetups all around the world. And I would, you know, have a lady in each area volunteer to sign up and start a group in her town. And I would then maybe once a month or once every three months, which is really, I think all it would take is if ladies got together every three months, I would email her, you know, a list of maybe a Bible study or maybe some, um, fun icebreaker games to play or get to know you questions things like that to make it easy for her and then ladies who find me or find my website there would be like a map on the website of all the Taurus Scissors meetups around the world and you could find one close to you it sounds awesome <laughs> and other groups are doing something very very similar to this the problem is that I can't, ooh, son, I can't vet the groups. I can't even vet the ladies who start the group. I mean, possibly I could, but it would take a lot of time and I don't have that kind of time. And even then it's not a sure thing. We all know there's crazy people out there. And the way the world is going, I'm not sure it's safe for me to have a map on my website showing you know, who leads, and maybe it, would, it wouldn't have the details of the next meetup, but even a contact of a lady running a group. Um, and then the idea would be that the ladies would contact her and say, you know, I want to come to your next meetup. When and where is it? Well, then anybody can be showing up. So for security's sake, even if you meet in a public place, I just didn't feel like that's very safe for me to be the one having a website like that because anybody could call and pretend they're a tour keeper and I'm not trying to scare everybody but there's crazy people out there <laughs> and the way the world is going maybe we don't want that all over so that's the big reason I can't security is my biggest barrier I can't figure out how to do it so I don't know how to help you with your desire for connection other than encouragement so here's my encouragement. I just think you ladies should start groups. Just start a ladies get together. And I'm gonna give you some advice and some tips right now. Don't do it too often. You'll burn yourself out. And ladies are too busy. I recommend once every three months. I, what I envisioned for these meetups, I'll tell you my vision for the meetups. And you do whatever you think the father is telling you to do. It's gonna be your group is like really all inclusive. So ladies from different fellowships would come together at this one thing. And so they might not all agree on all the things. And so therefore a Bible study is actually, I don't think a good idea. <laughs> Cause once you can do a Bible study, everybody divides the word differently in some things. And, um, I believe we can fellowship even if 
um, we don't agree on all the finer points of Torah. So I don't recommend doing a Bible study because that's not the point of this group. The point of your meetup would be, and again, this is my vision, you do yours. The point, of, the vision I had for these meetups would be really connection, sitting down, getting to know each other, and then from those um, precursory connections at the big ladies quarterly meetup, ladies can make um, more, <laughs> can make deeper connections. So you might find another lady who has kids your same age or two moms of special needs kids might find each other or um, two ladies who you know are empty nesters or single might find each other or groups of them and they will get together more often. Do you see? So the meetup is, I don't wanna say speed dating, but kind of like speed dating, I guess, you know? You're, you're meeting up, you're seeing who's out there and you can even have a, a thing on the name tags and I recommend name tags. They're not dorky, they are super, super helpful. It makes people feel much more comfortable if they don't have to remember people's names. So name, um, where they're from, and maybe three things about themselves so that the homeschool moms can find each other and stuff. Um, not that I believe in clicks, uh, but actually I kind of do believe in clicks because we're gonna click with different people and we all need that deep, deep connection of you know besties. <laughs> but we need a place to find besties. So these meetups, that's what I picture these meetups is for. Um, a good way for ladies to get to know each other is to just take prayer requests. When, um, and that's fellowship. When you hear what people are going through and what they need prayer for, the whole, all the ladies can serve that lady, not just by praying, but in practical ways too. You find out what she needs. Does she need meals? Does she need babysitters? Whatever. And you can learn a lot about people, but you're not having to do a big, deep theological Bible study where we're gonna end up focusing on differences of opinion. Instead, we're focusing on need. What a cool, beautiful thing. And women are, well, women are good at both. <laughs> but um, I, you're only gonna have a little bit of time. I don't, this should only take two hours. Again, we're, ladies are busy, they don't have time. Another thing that I think these meetups should be are hyper-local. And by that I mean really close in your area. Ladies hopefully are not driving. I mean, if there's a meetup in your town and a meetup, you know, a town an hour away, everybody should go to the meetup in their closest town so that you can serve each other and really hang out. You can make friends that live local and you can meet at the park and stuff. You can take people meals when they need meals because everybody lives around you. And the way the world is nowadays, that's becoming more and more important. Um, I don't recommend doing these on Shabbat. Shabbat is a time to dive deeper into the word and to have your whole family with you if you have a family. And another great, so another great thing about doing these meetups not on Shabbat, in my opinion, <laughs> I haven't actually started this yet, um, but I've, you know, I've heard from lots of ladies, is that you can have a lot of options of where to go. You know, you can meet, well, depending on the restrictions in your area, you can meet at a coffee shop or just about anywhere if it's not Shabbat. So that's another good thing. Um, a lot of people are looking for a connection, not just for themselves, but for their whole family. And a lot of the ladies have husbands who are leery. You know, a lot of women come into Torah first, and so before they show up at someone's Sabbath fellowship, they just want to get to know at least the, the woman of the house first. And so these ladies groups, these meetups can be really great for people to sort of, you know, get a feel for each other and um, see if that's a good place to take your family on Shabbat. Sort of like breaking the ice. Women are really good at breaking the ice. <laughs> so that's kind of my, my vision of how the meetups would have gone. Um, and again, if you have besties that are two hours away, get together with them separate time, but do this hyper local. And if it turns into a Bible study, then great, have a Bible study with just that core group of people. But I also think it would be wonderful if a lady in your area opened up a, a meetup once every three months 
for everybody to come to. And, uh, and I mean everybody, multi-generational, the young women and the old women, and get to know each other. <laughs> and therefore, make those connections that you can follow up, because a meeting once a quarter, you can't really get to know each other too well that way. But again, that's the, the speed dating part where then later on, you go and you hang out at play dates and invite each other over to your houses. Um, I do recommend a public place for this so that you don't have to worry about cleaning your house or cooking food. Um, if you do do it at your house, it's only two hours. You don't need a potluck. <laughs> we love potlucks, but you don't have to have a potluck at every single event. Oh, did I really just say that? <laughs> so it's, if it's just two hours long, there's not a lot of time to talk and take prayer requests anyway. Um, you don't have to have a potluck. You just coffee, coffee and lemonade. That's all you need. Maybe tea. <laughs> Um, don't overthink it. Don't overdo it. Keep it really simple. Keep it free as much as you can. I just encourage you ladies to start it in your own hometowns. And then pray, pray, pray that the Father will send ladies to you. Because I, I can't figure out how to send them to you. Um, I, I can't even figure out how to index a list of all of you who have groups. I don't think it's feasible. <laughs> so, but the father knows where you are and he knows who needs to go and meet ladies there. So he will send them, just pray. Get um, a couple of other ladies to do this with you. So hopefully you're not all alone. Um, but if you're the one starting it and you have a vision for how this should look, follow your vision prayerfully and humbly. Follow your vision and make it happen. And then the word will spread. Ladies will tell other ladies who will tell other ladies, oh, there's a women's meetup, you know, and, and again, I don't recommend Bible study because people get intimidated. They won't come. But to just break the ice, a women's meetup, it's fun. We, we play games, we talk, we take prayer requests. Really easy. And you don't have to talk if you don't want to. Really easy. Women can do that. Women who are new to Torah, they're leery, they're not sure. This is a really easy but meaningful. So just because it's not a Bible study doesn't mean it's not meaningful connection is some of the most meaningful things we can do so I encourage you and you don't have to be an expert in the Bible or you don't have to be old to Torah you can be new to Torah and start a meetup group um, you know there's no rules like that <laughs> you can be young you can be old you can be single whatever start a group and invite all the women maybe once every three months even just once every six months to meet up somewhere and get to know each other and um, and encourage them to connect with the ones that they click with later on and hopefully everybody clicks with somebody um, people will get out of it what they put into it if people don't talk they're not gonna meet anyone right <laughs> so encourage them bring them into conversations um, again name tag so have any of you done this if you've done it and you have um, recommendations or further ideas or um, what worked well what did not work well <laughs> can you leave comments and encourage the rest of us um, with your ideas because you I'm sure you've done some cool things that I didn't just mention and is it worth doing is it hard but is it worth it tell us about it thank you